What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mordai J and we are locked in. This is day four of the eight day recap of the Netflix series The Madness. And right now, Muncie, oh, this is probably the worst that it's going to get. His name is plastered all throughout all the social media, the news outlets, the body, the remains of Mark Simon were found in his building. And right now, they're considering him armed and dangerous. So that means watch out for the black man with the beard. That means all of us could potentially be in trouble. <laughs> but before we jump into this and break down episode four, if you like this kind of content, I always say this murder mystery, this docu-series, this investigative research, this trying to figure out right from wrong, then The Madness might be a show for you. And this is day four. We got four episodes left after this. But make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button and we're on that road to 75,000 subscribers. But let's go ahead and jump into it. This is episode four of The Madness on Netflix. Right where we left off, Times Square. Mark Simon's remains found in Philadelphia apartment building of Muncie Daniels. Man, oh man, oh man. Imagine looking up there, they got your face up there. They're saying you're wanted for this, armed and dangerous. You gotta get low. You got to change up. You can't be walking around in suits anymore because everyone knows who you are and what you do. Back at home, his son and his ex-wife, they're watching the news. She's telling Demetrius to turn it off. He's like, man, this is crazy. Imagine seeing your father on the news for something you know he didn't do. But then again, you're wondering, did he really do it? I don't think my dad would do something like this. But Elena's telling him to turn it off because she still supports him and she believes definitely that he didn't do it she's been helping him out and she even got him a lawyer so he does exactly what you're supposed to do change your identity switch up your clothes he got a new york fitted on a hoodie t-shirt got some adidas on and he's trying to get on the bus because obviously you can't take cabs you can't take the taxi he's trying to hop on the bus to get back to philly from new york but when he's down here trying to get a ticket there's a guy um, pleasing himself and it's nothing you want to touch after they didn't got done doing what they do. The subways and train stations are already dirty, but this is just another layer of filth. He makes it back to Philly and he goes to Isaiah. And Isaiah is saying, listen, the guy that you took out, Mark Simon, I know you didn't do it, but I got to talk this way. Brother 14, the police, they're coming after you because he's really one of them, a white supremacist. And he was like the Jesse Jackson of his group. So, with this being said, you're going to have to lay low a little bit because people are looking at you and people want you. They want your head. They want somebody to blame for Brother 14. It's kind of what we got going on right now with the elections, but this is even crazier because he's getting framed. Isaiah takes him over to Callie's house. Now, him and Callie, they've been putting in some work. They're buying back the block, one building at a time. Now, she has a building right next to her, and there's a townhome that they're renovating. So this is where they take Munchie to lay low because no one's going to look over there, and we know that Callie is off the radar just for the simple fact he isn't on her birth certificate. So no one would know that this is his daughter. So she comes over here, and she's like, listen, you know, you, college degree, you ain't got any friends. Me, high school diploma, I'm buying back the community, and plus you're staying with me, <laughs> I'll pass on my college. So at least he has somewhere to lay his head and their relationship is getting closer to each other. He sleeps in here on an air mattress. It isn't too insulated in here. So, you know, it's probably cold as hell. But the next morning he's looking out the window because someone's in Callie's backyard. Now this guy looks over, he grabs a bat because he's thinking kids are playing around in his house. Now he's like, oh, Muncie, oh man, we know who you are. You hiding out in here? Man, come on over here. We are using the grill, you know, Charcoal was better than propane. Get you some ribs. <laughs> You're not the only person in North Philly with a warrant, you know, because he's on the run right now. He's a fugitive of the law. So now a couple of people in the community, they're all over in Callie's backyard. Callie comes home and she's upset because he's outside showing his face when he should really be laying low. Because remember, we know Stu, a billionaire. So anyone can turn you in for some money and we know how people get down. So that's why Callie is upset because she's trying to protect him. But everyone has their own conspiracies and they're saying, man, you should do this. You should do that. But he's like, nah, I got to figure out how to do this on my own because obviously he's trying to clear his name and he has a couple of leads. He doesn't want to lose all of that. 
when he goes and talks to Callie, they have a little heart to heart. We know that the relationship has been a little rocky. He hasn't really been around, but now he's asking her the simple question of, do you think I should turn myself in? Is this something I should really do? And of course she gives him her advice, but she's like, you're gonna do what you wanna do. At the end of the day, if you decide to turn yourself in, okay, I support it. If you don't, if you wanna continue to pursue this, then I support it. But we all know Muncie, he's just asking questions to see if anyone will agree with him. That's what Isaiah told us. He gets out and he hits the streets. He has to move around. He got the Kango bucket hat on thinking he's LL Cool J. He got some Jordan ones on and he's hitting the block. Now, should he be out in the public like this? No, because as he's walking around, some random Asian guy spots him and he starts to follow him. Well, it turns out he didn't call the police and he's trying to follow where Muncie is going. But he pulls his gun out, takes the phone and throws it away. He's like, man, don't you follow me, get out of here. He's nervous now, but remember, people going for these award you know what I'm saying you get a reward for turning somebody in and you never know how much that is a hundred thousand forty thousand hell ten thousand is life-changing money for some people he goes and talks to his lawyer well his former lawyer because you remember he can't be allowed to talk to him and what he's saying is if you were planning on turning yourself in within the next 48 hours will be the best because the earlier you turn yourself in it looks like I'm less guilty than when they come and pick you up so if we're going to do this, we need to orchestrate it, but we need to get our ducks in a row before we actually do it. If that's the plan, no one really wants to turn themselves in, especially if they didn't do it, because you know, once you get in them interrogation rooms and they start holding you, they can start manipulating things. However, they want it to go at Lori's house, her kids, Tanner James, he's calling people little assholes while playing the video game because someone called him a little N word. Well, it turns out he's logged into his dad's account mark simon and he's playing with some adults and since they know that mark is unalive they're taking it out on the kid when she gets on the game she's saying hey don't be talking to my seven year old like that filling his brain up with this bs and she told him to never play on that game again but these threats are starting to get closer and closer to home and this is why she's starting to realize that she needs to help muncie out a little more than she thought initially muncie calls the family and they all start reminiscing Elena starts talking about the first date they went on salsa dancing because <laughs> just like any of us other players, he lied a little bit and said he was the king of salsa dancing. She said there's the right way, there's the wrong way, and then there's the Muncie way. Now his daughter said he's always running away. <laughs> Isaiah said he's just looking for someone to agree with him. And now he told his family he's deciding to fly off and just leave the country. This is all the best bet for him, just to leave and let things die down and hopefully it'll blow over. Isaiah arranged for him to get up out of here. They put him in the back of a Tesla. They drive through a checkpoint. The checkpoint, they're looking for Muncie. They see him in the back of the trunk, but some high power figures here, they say, go on through, we don't see anything. But once they get to the tarmac to get on this private jet to actually get up out the country, Muncie has a change of heart. He's thinking, if I run now, if I keep running and doing what my daughter said, then how will anything get better for my family? Who's going to be there to protect them? People are still going to harass him until I show up or turn myself in. So he decides he's not going to leave the country. He actually walks back to the checkpoint and turns himself in because he's doing this not only for himself, but for his family. He decides to turn himself in. His lawyer shows up that Elena got him. And now they're doing all the questioning. The only thing is they have a lot of evidence that's planted and it making it look like he actually did all of it. The body in the apartment building, his research on the internet, looking up how to dispose of a body, looking up brother 14, renting a car, going to the cabin, it's all looking bad. They even found the box of the pen that he used to stab Ant in the neck one time. So right now it is horrible. And his lawyer says, listen, don't answer anything else. Just be quiet. Just hush. Don't say anything else because the cops, they have a lot of evidence. And we know that somebody has been messing with the evidence. Hey, he decided to turn himself in like a real man should. And he's in here breaking down. He's crying. Why? <laughs> And then out of nowhere, he lets out a yell, but it goes silent. Uh!
man, Muncie is going through it. There you go, episode four, the recap of the madness. The madness just begins. He didn't turn himself in, only to find out that the evidence is just piling and piling and piling up on him. I don't know how he's gonna get up out of this thing, but let me know what you think. Would you have turned yourself in or would you have went ahead and got on that flight? I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm already gone. I'm on that flight. I'm on the beach. I'm chilling. I'm not worried about nothing. My family, y'all had to come over, sell the house and everything, sell my condo and then come on over. But let me know what you think. I'm ODIJ. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for episode five of the eight day recap of the madness on Netflix. Thanks for watching. We're on that road to 75,000 subscribers and only you can help me make it. Now nah, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.